breaking this morning, a dangerous murder suspect escapes GW Hospital. And coming up, we're live as police launch an all-out manhunt in the heart of the district. And the heat wave will continue through the day today with high temperatures bouncing back mid to upper 90s and those feels like temperatures right around 100. Thankfully, some relief is in the forecast. I'll have more details on that coming up. And also coming up this morning, cashing in and clearing clutter, where you can get cold, hard cash for the things your kids no longer use. The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Well, good morning. It is 6 o'clock now on a Thursday morning, starting off with a live look outside. It's another hot day ahead, but we are tracking some storms later this evening, which will bring a cold front. We're hoping for that. All right. Well, good morning and thanks for starting your morning with us here on DC News Now. I'm Tanaya Wright. Yeah, good morning to you. I'm Corey James. Shanique, we have more on your roads in just a moment. Jackie's tracking that forecast. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about those storms. What's the timing of it looking like? Well, it looks like later on this afternoon, especially farther off towards the north and west, later on this evening, closer towards DC. But let's talk about those temperatures to kickstart your Thursday morning commute, starting off well into the 70s for much of the region, including DC. Coming in at 78, also 70 in Annapolis, 77 Lexington Park. We are in low 70s in Hagerstown. Seeing those 60s though mainly from Martinsburg to Winchester. Loray, you're coming at 64. That's the coolest spot on the map. And those dew points, it is still quite soupy up and down the I-95 corridor. We're talking about dew points in the low 70s. That's more of that tropical feel to the air when you're seeing those low 70s on the dew points map. Highs today climbing back mid upper 90s. That humidity does stick around at hell of that cold front. And with that humidity and the hot air, we're talking about those heat index values right around 100 degrees later on this afternoon. So again, that heat wave continues, but this cold front back out towards our West will bring a little bit of that relief later on today in the form of some scattered showers and storms. Some of these could be on the stronger side. So that severe outlook, especially for our northern zones at that slight risk, that's two out of five on that severe scale. The main impact will be gusty winds associated with those stronger storms. More details in the timing coming up. But Shanika is here with the latest timing as you're heading out on this Thursday morning commute. How's it looking out there this morning? All right. Well, nothing really holding you back besides this one issue out in Prince George's County. This is right through 95 heading southbound past 212. Well, let's flip over. You are seeing some congestion, but really not bad and mostly green. So hopefully it stays that way. You are just at the six o'clock hour. Looking at the district, DC 295 is also moving a bit slow past Kenilworth and Eastern Avenue. But other than that, no real big issues. Now we did have a work zone along 66 in Centerville just past 29. So do use caution in that area. That's heading eastbound. All right, Shanika, thank you. Your time right now is 6.02. A quick look at your know-and-go headlines this morning. First up, the DMV continues to feel the heat. Today marks the last day of the D.C. hot weather emergency declared by Mayor Bowser earlier this week. Temperatures are expected to hit the upper 90s today before the rain cools it down a bit, moving into the weekend. And Prince George's County Police say an internal investigation is underway after an officer was caught on video kissing a woman and then getting into the back of his patrol car with her. It happened at park, at a park rather, in Oxen Hill. The department says the officer is on suspension during the investigation. And police in Pennsylvania have expanded their search after a murder, conv a convicted murderer escaped from prison last Thursday. Now, video shows the inmate you see right here scaling the wall of the prison before climbing over razor wire and jumping from a roof. All right, well, breaking now, the search continues right now for a murder suspect. Police say escaped from George Washington University Hospital. Yeah, DC News Now's Liberty Zabala is live in Foggy Bottom with the latest on this search. And Liberty, you have some new developments this morning. Good morning, Corey and Tanaya. Well, George Washington University just lifted its shelter in place in this area along 23rd Street and I Streets here as police have also cleared the scene moments ago as well. But they're still urging residents and students to use caution as the suspect remains on the loose. So take a good look at your screen. Have you seen this man? Metropolitan Police say 30 year old Christopher Haynes escaped from the hospital here here just before 340 last night. They say he was in custody for homicide. Police describe Haynes as six foot, about 205 pounds. They say he was last seen wearing black handcuffs on his right wrist, a black t-shirt and gray shorts. Police scoured this area surrounding the university from Georgetown to Key Bridge for several hours. The university even had to cancel its classes and activities out of an abundance of caution. They say if you see Haynes, do not engage him, but call 911. I'm a little on edge. 
but um, I'm hoping he doesn't hurt anybody. I feel like he has nothing to lose, so it's kind of scary. And now the FBI is also offering a $10,000 reward for any information that can lead to Haynes' arrest. For now, live here in Foggy Bottom, Liberty Zabala, D.C. News Now. Liberty, thank you. Tom, right now with 604 as our dangerous heat wave continues, the United Nations Weather Agency says we're also breaking records for summer heat. The agency says this summer was one of the hottest ever recorded. Now, July and August were two of the hottest months recorded in modern history. Take a look at this graph here. The World Meteorological Organization showing you can see the summer all the way to your right in red with the highest average temperature. That measurement is also double the next highest, which goes back to 2019. And taking a look at more stats from this historic summer, August was about 2.7 degrees warmer than pre-industrial averages. The world's oceans were the hottest ever recorded at almost 70 degrees. And so far, this year is the second hottest year on record behind 2016. Meantime, the heat is impacting school districts across the country as students head back to class. Schools in Maryland, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey, they cut days short or canceled them altogether because of poor air conditioning. Other schools have decided to take classes online for now. Meantime, here in the DMV, there are some changes coming to Prince George's County Public Schools because of the heat. School coaches are allowed to practice as long as they follow specific rules. That includes keeping the practice light, giving student athletes frequent water breaks, and coaches must monitor every student athlete closely during the practice. Your time right now is coming up on 6.06 this morning. HVAC crews are working hard across northern Virginia to keep the air on for customers. A Action Home Services in Fairfax County says the amount of repair calls that they have received during this time has, triple did, uh, has tripled. Now the owner of that company says the demand in repairs has been really hard on the employees. But when you get record set in temperatures, I mean, everybody and their brother's calling you, and I know a lot of people are saying, Chuck, hey, can you get someone out here? We generally don't, don't uh, allow vacations during the summertime, and especially now, um, you know, this is, this is when we have to just stand up. Now, there are some things you can do to stay cool at home. Since AC units are typically outside of your home, remember to clear the vents of any vines or bushes that can cause your unit to fail. Prince George's County Police say an internal investigation is going to be launched after video shows a uniformed officer kissing a woman and then getting back into his patrol car with her at a park in Oxon Hill. That officer has been identified as Corporal Francesco Marlette. Sources confirm Marlette has been suspended before for alleged child abuse and domestic violence. However, they say in both cases he was cleared. DC News now spoke with Marlette's wife. She tells us despite the negative attention, she is going to stand by her husband. Marlette is on suspension while the department investigates. Well, Montgomery County Public Schools is taking action after a fight injured several students. Now, this happened Friday after a Bethesda Chevy Chase and Walter Johnson football game. The district is working with Montgomery County Police to create new safety guidelines for school events. MCPS released the following statement about that fight. Available evidence has been reviewed and we can confirm that at this time the appropriate action has been applied in alignment with the MCPS student code of conduct. No students have been criminally charged for the fight, but the investigation remains ongoing. MCPS will now make the following requirements to make sure safety at the games moving forward. Now students attending games must have a school ID to enter. Anyone underage watching the game who is not from a competing school must be accompanied by an adult and backpacks will no longer be allowed. Police say officers will now be present at identified areas of concern where students tend to hang out after games. All right, well, police are expanding their search for a convicted murderer who escaped a Philadelphia prison last week. Yeah, 34-year-old Danilo Cavalcante was spotted on trail cameras at a botanical garden farther south from where police had been looking. Take a look at this new video here. It shows the police that say Cavalcante escaping from Chester County Prison last Thursday by scaling a wall, climbing over razor wire, and then jumping from a roof. Authorities say his escape was not known for about an hour. Now, Cavalcante was recently convicted of murder in Pennsylvania. The expanding search for him caused two nearby school districts to cancel classes earlier this week. Police, they are urging people in the area to keep their homes and vehicles locked. 
All right, well, as fall approaches, the CDC has released new data about a new surge in COVID cases. Yeah, the trend comes as medical experts say many of these cases go unreported as COVID appears to be more common now than it was three years ago. That report from the CDC says for the month of August, hospitalizations are up by 15.7% in recent weeks. Meantime, COVID-related deaths have also increased by 17%. Major vaccine manufacturers have said that they are ready to roll out with the latest vaccine provided they get approved by the FDA. Now, as cases are on the rise, new data from Moderna showing its updated COVID-19 vaccine for this fall is highly effective against the Parola subvariant. That is right. Moderna says that the new shot caused nearly a ninefold increase in antibodies against this latest strain. Now, although this latest strain does not account for even 1% of cases in the U.S. just yet, concerns have risen due to the more than 30 mutations found in the virus. The updated vaccines are expected to roll out sometime this month. All right, well, medical experts in Maryland say they are seeing a small uptick in the number of COVID cases. This causing one school in Montgomery County to implement a mass policy for one class who experienced an increase in cases. Now, according to MCPS, students and staff in the classes are now required to wear masks for the next 10 days. However, there is some debate over on if masking one single class in an entire school will be effective. We want to maximize time in school for kids and masking for a short period of time helps to prevent the spread to other children. We know that masks will mitigate spread of the disease. So, you know, having one class mask, but then if they're mixing with the remainder of the school population may not be as effective as considering a broader strategy. According to public health officials, the DMV has seen COVID hospitalizations increase by about 24% over the last two weeks. All right, your time right now is...